Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Hang on just a second. I hope you have a cup of something and you're going to sit back and watch this tutorial because I think you're going to get excited. I'm really excited about it. Okay, so if you have a silhouette machine like a Cameo, I believe you can just use the basic free version of your software to do this. If, however, you have a Cricut machine like me, we have to have the business edition. There is a charge for that. If you use my link down below, it's about $56 when you make sure you get the other little coupon code that jumps up on the page when you get there. But this is a program that you get to keep forever and ever. It's something you download onto your computer. It won't work on the iPad or you know, mobile devices because this is a large program. Uh, that you're going to be using. It's not something that's in the air in the cloud. This is a program on your computer that you'll own and it can do so much. So what I'm going to show you today is this. How many of you have a whole slew of stickers, not stickers, stamps, rubber stamps or these clear stamps that you've had for years and years and years and you used to use them a lot but not so much anymore. I'm going to show you a new use for them in either your Cricut machines, Maker, Air, whatever you have, or in your silhouette machine. So what do you need to get started? Obviously you need your stamps, this kind or the rubber stamps. Um, I just have my first one on a piece of acrylic block. You'll need some ink. I have the stays on jet black because that's the one I would I would recommend black. At least I think that's would be best. Uh, you also need to pick this up at Joann's or somewhere like that. It's called a pick scan. Picks scan. This is a mat that you'll have to use that helps your machine know where things are. Okay. So to get started, and oh, here are some samples of some that I had just done, and you can color them if you'd like to with markers or um, um, colored pencils, anything like that. This one was uh, was three candles actually together on the um, sample. And I cut them out individually. I could have done them all together as one piece. Let's move these aside. Clean our desk just a tiny bit. All right, so I'm gonna open the stays on. I used it the first time today in years, I think. And I was happily surprised that the ink is still juicy. So I'm just gonna juice up this first one and stamp it on here. Just like that. Perfect. I'll make two of these. Okay, perfect. All right, now I'm going to take this one off. Let me rub this stamp on the back of a piece of paper to get it fairly clean to start with. And I'll do, I will do the, the happy birthday one now. This one was a little bit tricky. Uh, and you'll see why when I get to that part. Here it is. And I'm going to get it all juiced up. Those of you who are professional stampers, <laughs> don't judge me by my stamping. Okay, hopefully that's juicy enough. Let's see what we got. Perfect. And I'm just going to do one of those. Okay. I'm just stamping this on the back of this piece just to temporarily clean it a little bit till I have time to do that. And let's see, I'll do one more. Let's do the hat, the bit of oh, hat, as cute as can be. Yeah, okay, get it juicy. Looks pretty good. All right, now just stamp one right here. Okay, that will be enough to be able to show you how this works. So, the next thing that I'm going to do, let me cover my juicy stamp pad again. Where did, okay, there it is. Keep it nice and juicy. 
move that out of the way and that. Put this here. Move this. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get this scanning mat right here. I've already taken off its protective covering. So I'm just going to put this on here. Now I have to be very careful to stay inside of these lines. I can't go over top of any of them, any of these lines. So right here, I'm just about over top of it. I think it might be okay. All right, so there's this, and this is on the Pix scan mat. Now I can either scan this with my um, scanner that I have over there, my printer that also scans, and that's really simple to do because then it's right away in your computer, and I'll show you how to do that. Or I could take a picture of it and then import that into my program. But let me show you up here in Silhouette Business Edition or Basic Edition if you're a Silhouette owner, how to do this. Okay, so here I am in Silhouette Studio, and again, I'm in the Business Edition because I have a Cricut machine. Although if you don't have a Cricut machine, I mean, <laughs> if you have a Silhouette machine, it will work, um, I believe, in the Basic Edition. If I go to Help right here and go to View In, I can view what it would look like in the Standard or Basic Edition. And when I do that, it changes the tools that are available. But notice over here, see this PIX? That's what we're going to use to do this um, project with our stamps. The only problem is this is the free version and people with silhouettes can use it. We can't use it for our Cricut though because if we go to File and Save As, Save to Hard Drive, uh, the options available to us are nothing that our Cricut machines can read. That's why we have to get the Business Edition so that we can save things as PNGs and SVGs. So enough of that. Um, let's get started. So what I've done, let me X this out, is let me go back to, change this back to Business Edition so I can save it and take it over to Cricut Design Space when I'm done. So let me X out this toolbar or that panel. And I'm going to come up here on the right near the top where it says PIX. It says open the PIX scan panel. I'm going to open that. And this is what the mat kind of looked like. Now there are two ways that you can scan things. You can use your computer, which I mean your camera, which is very easy to do, and I've done that already. And you can also use uh, a printer that you have that is also a scanner. So that's what I'm going to use this time so you can see how that works. So I click on this and then the source that comes up is not the one that I have down here in the basement with me. I need to look for the printer I have down here and it's the HP Office Jet. So I'll click on that. And then the next thing I'm going to say is import pick scan image from scanner. So before I got back online here, I did you know, put my picture on the mat, making sure, and I showed you right before this, that it was within the lines or the boundary lines. And now what I've done is I've put it on my printer glass face down so that it can be scanned. So now I'm just going to say import pick scan image from scanner. So I'll click on that. So I'm going to just leave these as they are. I did change mine at one time to black and white, and I don't remember if I changed it to photo, but that's what mine says now. And I'm just going to hit scan. And notice it's preparing to scan. And I hear my machine starting over there. Now let's see what kind of a scan we get. It looks like it's coming in really well. Nice. Oh, right, really good. All right, now if I wanted to, I could mess with these buttons if I need to up here at all. I could darken it a little bit if I wanted to. It doesn't look like it's, oh, there you go. You see how it's lightening it and darkening it? So, you know, depending on how your lines are, you can mess with that. 
Okay, I want you to notice something here right now. One of the th one of the things that it kept saying to me was the left or the right hand side has to be visible totally. And I'll show you that again when we get off. But you see, this is the left hand side of that mat. And now it's all showing, so I'm hoping that means it's going to work. So let's see. Yes, that was the trick. So I'll show you that at the very end. All right, so here we have our images. And they look great. They came in wonderfully. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and trace them. I'm going to select the trace area and go highlight everything. And I'm going to bring the threshold up just a little bit. And I'm going to say trace outer edge. All right, so now let's trace the outer edge of that. And I'm going to bring that over here, way over here. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these things. And I'm going to come over here to the offset panel. And I'm going to make an offset. And I'm going to make the first offset rather small for like the present and the hat. So I'm going to do 0. Point, let's see what was these like before. 0 0.08. And that might be a little larger than what you like eventually, but we'll check this out first. All right, so there we have that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab these and get rid of these things that are all the inner parts, because all I want is the outside edge. So I'm going to click on all this to highlight it and delete it. OK, so right now the hat looks great and the present looks great. The happy birthday here does not look good. So let me go back to get those balloons, those bubble things. Let me move the hat out of the way, because it's fine. And this is good, and this is good. But this is not good. We don't want it to cut like this at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of this again. And I'm going to once again come over here to the offset panel. And I'm going to offset again. And it looks like if I offset it that large, I will probably get just everything. Maybe I can make it a little smaller. Let's see what that looks like, apply. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now I can grab this part out and delete it, because I no longer need it. Highlight it and delete it. And now we have some things in here I don't need. So I'm going to just go through here, click on these things, and delete them. And this is probably a little more than what you need for this tutorial. But I'm going to show you, if you come up here to this tool up here, and you drag over this part of the shape, you can see that this is kind of a skinny little area right here. And it really doesn't need to be cut out like that. So what I can do is double click on this, which gives me the nodes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of those nodes and say uh, delete point. So I'm going to right click on another one and delete point. Right click on this one and delete point. And I can do one more, and then this is going to probably be connected right like that. If I delete this point, OK, just like that. So that's fine, I think. Let me scroll back out now with using my Control key and the minus key on my keyboard. Whoops, not too far. So come back up or in. OK. So now what I have to do is I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go ahead and trace these again. So I'm going to go Trace, Select Trace Area, and I'm going to get these. And I'm going to move the threshold up just a little bit. There we go. Looks pretty good. And this time, instead of tracing the outer edge, I'm just going to hit Trace. And that's going to give me the stuff I need for the inside. Okay. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to go to Object, Release Compound Path. And that makes them all separate. 
Then I'm going to take the hat by itself and highlight it and say make compound path. And now it's back to the way it was originally. But what I want to do now is I want to come up here and I want to change the color of the hat to black. And I also want to change the line of the hat to black. Okay, so that's exactly, whoops, that's exactly what we need for the hat. I'm going to move it over here into place. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing with the present. I'm going to grab, highlight all of it. And I can come up here to object and make compound path. And then again, you can see that it has, if I make it really big, if we scroll in again, I don't want to enlarge it because it won't fit anymore, but let me make it big like this. You see how there are two lines here? There's the outer line, which is the line, and that's this right here. If I change its color to black, you see it changed the line to black. But notice there's no fill in the middle of that line. Just like some of you have noticed when you start doing text, your text just has an outline like this, no fill. <clears throat> to get the fill in that part, you come up here because this is what color the fill is. If I make this black, watch what happens. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna highlight this one over here and just delete it because what I can do is just hold down my Alt key and drag another one of these and I have two right off the bat. Okay, so let's scroll back out using the Control and the minus key. And let's bring this over here, put it into place. And what I could do with these two things is highlight both of them and then come up here to this center and it should center it in there perfectly. I can do the same with the hat. Come up here, center. And now I'm going to take this last present and bring it up here. And see how off-centered it is when I highlight both of them and come up here to center, it'll go right into place perfectly. Okay, the last one we have to mess with is the happy birthday. So, whoa, I don't wanna do that. So what I better do is I better group this, right? Object and group. And then I'm going to come up here once again and I'm going to change the stroke color to black. You remember what that looks like now. Let's scroll in and see. There's that crazy text that's not filled in. So now I'm going to change the fill in, the fill to black. And I had the same thing happen to my D earlier when I did this. So I'll show you how I fixed that. Let's undo this. So since I didn't want that filled in, what I did was I got a circle here. Okay, and I came over here and I drew a circle in here. And I should probably make it a different color so I can see it. And you know what maybe I can do? Maybe I can do this. I will grab this. Let's see if I go to Object, Ungroup. And what about if I go to, if I click on the D. Uh, all right, see how that's two pieces? Click on that, hold down my Shift key and click the D behind it and then come over here and go to subtract. Yeah, that worked. All right, so we could do that with some more things, but don't worry about this. This is just really advanced, this part right here. You probably won't have to deal with this when you do your uh, rubber stamps, but if you do have an issue, you can let me know and we can work through it together. All right, so now let me group this all together. Object and group or right click and group. And I'm going to scroll back out so we can see everything that we've made. Okay, look, this is going to fit in here perfectly. Okay. Now, the only other thing that I did when I did mine was I changed the outer border of this. Well, I changed the color of that to white and I changed the border to black. So again, I changed. See how right now 
the backing part is like this um, grid. That means it's transparent. That means that the um, offset isn't going to show up. So we need to change the offset and I'll change it to white. But I'm also going to change that line to black. I could probably make it transparent, but I'm not positive. I'll do that on one of these presents. So on one of the presents, I'm going to change the offset to white. And I'm going to change the line to transparent. And let's see what happens. And now on this one, I'm going to change offset to white and the line to black. All right, so basically that is all we need to do. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight all of these and I'm going to go to File, Save Selection to Hard Drive, and this time instead of saving it as an SVG, I'm going to save it as a PNG file. So I'm going to uh, just call this birthday stamps. Birthday stamps. And I'm going to change it to a PNG. And I'm going to say OK. And it's going to ask me if I want the background to be transparent. I do click that usually, but it doesn't seem to hold up when I get over to Cricut Design Space. I still have to get rid of the background. You'll see in a moment. So I'll go to Save. And then I'm going to come over to Cricut Design Space. This is the one I had been working on. I'm going to get a new one. And I'll replace it. I'm going to Upload. Upload Images. And you can see how many times... Go back here and look at this. You can see how many times I practice these things before I start showing you upload an image, browse, okay, and the one I've saved is birthday stamps, so open, and there they are, and I'll say complex, and this time it did save it as transparent, that's perfect, continue, these are absolutely perfect, just like this, look at this, Continue. Here, here's what they look like just as cut files. Here's what they look like as print then cut. I'll say save. And here they are here. I'm going to insert them. Alright, so here's what we have. And if I go to make it, I'll fit on the page like this. Um, I could, the only thing I can do if I want to change how they are on that page right now is I see they're grouped together, but they're not really a group over here. And there's no contouring that's able to be changed. So the only thing I could do if I wanted to rearrange how these are is to come over here to shapes, get a square or something, and then cover one of these shapes. And then, while that is selected, just select the other part of the group, and I can slice it out. And I can get rid of this, and I can get rid of this. And now this piece is sliced out, so I can move it independently of the others now. So I could get these closer together if I wanted to. So, uh, let's just attach them where they are now, and I'll show you that. And maybe I better, wait a minute, detach might have that a little bit too close, overlapping the um, offsets. So now I will just attach and make it. And now you can see they can be made on a smaller piece. So I'm going to go put this on my... No, first I have to continue and send it to my printer, right? Continue. Lots of times when people first start out with... Um, Cricut Design Space, or with Cricuts, they think when we say print then cut that you can print it on your Cricut machine, but you have to print it on a printer first. Notice it's telling me to send it to my printer. So I'm going to do that. 
And as soon as it stops, I'm going to send it to my printer. There we go. And it's going to print. And then I'll put it on my mat for print then cut to make sure it's exactly in the same orientation. In other words, I can't have this present. I can't have the present, the gift, being down at this part and happy birthday up here if this is the way it printed. It just won't work. So I'll be back after this prints. I'm going to put this on my mat the way that it shows on my screen. And on my screen for Cricut Design Space, it shows it with the happy birthday down at the bottom and it all over like this to the left hand side. So I'm going to go put this in my machine and tell you something else really quickly before I do. Remember when I was trying to do the scan and it kept saying about the sides not being in? I thought I had to make sure that the top where that large arrow was in, that all of this was visible inside my scanner, you know, on the glass when I turned it up like this. But they kept talking about the sides, so at least one of these sides has to be totally visible. And those must be because it has all these little marks that it can see. And that's how it does its print then cut, basically. So, or the pick scan. So I'm going to put this in my machine now, and I'll be back to show you how well it cuts. Okay, what I'd like you to look at here are the results of a test that I had done. Do you recall on some of them, I changed the outline from the red to black on those. And on this one, I made the outline transparent. Can you see that? All right, let's see when we take these out. This one, well, I don't really see it. Well, yes, I do. There's a tiny bit of a faint gray border around those because of the bleed and because of the color of the line. The only one that doesn't have any is the one that I made the line transparent, and it is this one right here. So that might be something that you'll want to make sure that you do. Make the line transparent. And I can show you, if you come back to my screen one more time, I can show you again what I'm talking about in silhouette. So let's go back over to silhouette. In here, if you'll notice this one, the line up here is the fill color. This is the fill color right here. Notice I can change it. And I could change it if I wanted to. But I wanted it to be white. And notice what color the line is up here. This is the line. It's black. If I make it transparent, it won't show up just like it didn't on the little gift. Here's the one that I did make transparent. Whoopsie. <laughs> All right, this is the one I made transparent, like this. And then this one here has a colored line. And if I make it red, you'll see what I'm talking about. Can you see how that's red now? Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. You see how that's red? So if I change the line color to blue. Now it's a pale blue, but I really want to change it to transparent. Uh, right now the fill color around it of the offset is white. I could change it if I want to. All of it. <laughs> like that. Okay. Or I could change it again back to white. Okay, well that's it. I hope you're going to enjoy using your rubber stamps and your clear stamps and making things with your Cricut machine or your Silhouette machine. Remember, for Silhouette users, you can just use the free edition that comes with your machine. For Cricut users, you have to buy the business edition and you can purchase that through my link down below which will save you about $50. You use the link, and then once you're on the website, make sure you look on the lower left-hand corner because it will tell you that you can save another 10% if you click on that. So, again, thank you very much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this. And please, you know, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, ask questions, join our Facebook group, especially the Cutting Up with Patty Ann one, because that's where we talk all things silhouette and 
um, Cricut together. So if you have a problem, you know, using your um, rubber stamps, that would be a good place to ask some questions and to be able to show some photos of what's going on. So again, thanks for joining me. Bye, y'all.